gentle joyousness, a mighty mildness, and repose and swiftness invested the gliding whale. The Olympian majesty did surpass the glorified white whale as he so divinely swam. Yet calm, enticingly calm, O oh, whale! Thou glidest on to all who for the first time eye thee. No matter how many in that same way thou mayest have be juggled and destroyed before. Moby Dick moved on, still withholding from sight the full terrors of his submerged trunk, entirely hiding the wretched hideousness of his jaw. But soon the fall apart of him slowly rose from the water. The Grand God revealed himself. Sounded and went out of sight. But then he saw a white living spot deep in the waters below, magnifying as it rose. Did it turn? And then there were plainly revealed two long, crooked rows of white, glistening teeth floating up from the undiscoverable bottom. It was Moby Dick's open mouth and scroll jaw. The glittering mouth, the odd when he devotes. Like an open door in marble too! Both jaws like enormous shears sliding further aft! Fits the craft completely in twain, and lost them fast again in the sea between the floating wrecks. They have spilled out of the boat and fell flat faced upon the sea! Ripplingly withdrawing from his prey, Moby Dick swam swiftly round the wrecked crew. Meanwhile, the men, half smothered in foam, and the white whale, appalling beauty, swam off! The men were brought back to the Pequot. Woo! <laughs> the thistle the ass refused. It pricked his mouth too keenly, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what soulless thing is this that laughs before a wreck? Man, did I not know thee to be as brave as fearless fire? I could swear thou wert a poltroon!